going to call the Board of Zoning Appeals meeting to order here this morning. And our first case is uh, case number 6409. Before I ask Mr. Dixon to introduce the file, there's a couple of things that uh, we need to make sure that we do today. Make sure you turn off all your electronic devices uh, so that they don't interrupt the recording of this hearing. Um, make sure that you exit at the same door as what you came in so that at closing time today, they're not running around the building trying to locate you. Uh, it looks like everybody got the memo to sign in on the uh, clipboard on the side. If you haven't done that, take an opportunity to do that. So with that, um, those housekeeping details, Mr. Dixon, could you introduce the file for us, please? All right, case 6409, a request for a conditional use for a country inn and event facility. The site is located at 1733 Wedekin Farm Drive, Westminster, Maryland, on property zone A, Agricultural District, in election district four by bat farms llc in care of kurt wedekin code of public local laws and ordinances sections 158.070 e 1t and 158.071 d 7 a through g a site visit is tentatively scheduled for wednesday august 17th 2022 at approximately 9 15 a.m in the file of this matter we have the following documents A email from Maureen Copeland uh, to the board she's writing regarding a conditional use hearing I'm unable to, to attend the hearing tomorrow and would like to comment about the proposed in an event facility if I may to summarize I do not feel that this location is appropriate to the proposed use there is an email from a Roseanne and William Schuler. Please note that our family votes no to this variance. That's the end of it. There is an email from an Eric Schuler. Please let me know how I can remotely vote against this property being able to conduct these activities. If you have not been down to Don Avenue in the last week, you will see every home has a sign in their front yard contesting this. There is an email from Larry Alvarez, August 17, 2022. He included a video. He wants, he wants to uh, voice his opposition to the conditional approval they are seeking use for. There are the site minutes for the case. There is a response to Joe Vance's request to various state and local agencies from Thomas Harris, permits and inspections. His comments, the tent will require a temporary tent permit each year of use. <clears throat> With the use of temporary restroom facilities, the site would be limited to 12 events per year. Change of use permits will be required for all structures used for the events and by the public. The site shall comply with the Maryland Accessibility Code. Signed, Thomas Harris. There's an August 3rd, 2022 letter from Linda D. Eisenberg, Secretary to the Planning Commission to the Board. After having reviewed the information contained in the attached analysis, the facts as presented in the application, the relevant portions of the plan, 
and in accordance with the provision set forth in the land use article, this condition to use request, if granted, is consistent with the policies, timing of the implementation of the plan, timing of development, timing of rezoning, development patterns, land uses, and densities or intensities. There's an August 3rd, 2022 memo from Abigail Rogers to the planning technician. The above reference BZA case has been reviewed for consistency with the policies and recommendations contained in the 2014 Carroll County Master Plan as amended in 2019, the Carroll County Water and Sewer Master Plan and other functional plans. The staff finding is that this request is consistent with the 2014 Carroll County Comprehensive Plan as amended in 2019 and would not have an adverse effect on the current use of the property. There's a notice for this hearing, August 1st, 2022, in the newspaper. There is a letter from Scott Jarvins, um, received August 3rd, 2022. He has concerns and would say no to the additional expansion and proposed use of the property located at 1733 Wedekin Farm Drive. Although locally, the more accurate address would be 634 Wilmot Ridge Road. I do not understand the reason for the discrepancy or inconsistency between the described addresses. There's a gate that prohibits access to the property. Notice an increase in large truck traffic as the uh, and as a number of questions he has. <laughs> there is a response to Joe Vance's request to various state and local agencies from Janet O'Meara, Bureau Chief Resource Management. Comments, a site plan should be required to address numerous environmental requirements. There is a response to Joe Vance's request to various state and local agencies from Laura Mateus, Bureau Chief Development Review. A site plan will be required in accordance with Chapter 155. There is a response to Joe Vance's request from J.P. Smith, Jr., Program Manager, Agland Preservation Program. This office has no comments at this time. This property is not in ag preservation. Hearing notice was posted July 25, 2022 by Scott Robinson, Zoning Inspector. There is a response to Joe Vance's request to various state and local agencies from Jay Voigt, Zoning Administrator. Uh, no comment. And then there's the application for conditional use for country in and event facility. There is a July 8th, 2022 letter from Kelly Schaefer Miller to the board. Development Design Consultants. I would ask that the file be entered in evidence. Do we have a motion to enter the file into evidence? So moved. Seconded. Been moved and seconded to enter the file into evidence. All in favor, aye. 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 We will go ahead and move the file into evidence. Uh, there's a lot of new faces in the audience, so let me attempt. At the end of the day, I guarantee you, you understand our process. I will attempt to describe the process to you before we get started. Um, I'm assuming that Ms. Miller is uh, the legal counsel for the applicant here today. She will have the opportunity to make opening statements, uh, go ahead and call witnesses, 
at the end of each witness's testimony, you will have the opportunity to go to the microphone and ask that witnesses, like pay attention, ask that witness questions of their testimony. At a later point in the hearing, you will have the opportunity to give your own testimony. So again, it will be questions of their testimony only. Let's get that perfectly clear. Um, I'm assuming Ms. Miller will have more than one, uh, um, you only have one witness? Okay, so we have one witness. Um, and with, with that, then uh, you will then, after she has concluded her case, then you will have the opportunity to go to the microphone. And when you go to the uh, microphone, uh, I want you to give your name, address, and occupation, and spell for the record your last name. And then you can give your own testimony. And then Ms. Miller and then also the, the board here will have the opportunity to ask you questions of your testimony. So before we get started, um, if you plan on testifying here today, could you please stand and raise your right hand and take the oath? So that would be, the rest of you are going to be spectators, come on now. Okay, raise your right hand please. Do you swear or affirm under the penalties of perjury that the testimony you are about to give is the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Very good, you can be seated. Just here for informational purposes, Mr. Chairman. Okay, very good, Mr. Voigt. Sir, there, there are chairs up here that you could. I can't see you back here. Back here. Back here. Uh, okay, very good. Can you speak up? It's very hard to hear back here. Really? Okay. Can you hear me better now? Yeah. Okay. Okay, Ms. Miller. Thank you, good morning. I will also try to speak up, but I welcome if anybody is unable to hear me, um, just let us know. Uh, good morning, Kelly Schaefer Miller, 73 East Main Street, Westminster, Maryland, 21157. I am here today on behalf of the applicant, Kurt Wedekind and Bat Farms, LLC. Uh, I appreciate Mr. Dixon's introduction of the file. We are here today requesting conditional use approval for a country in an event facility at this property. Um, as you all are aware, that is the terminology of the code, um, and I, I think in, in some instances it, it leads to a misconception of what the actual request is but you will hear testimony from my client today that he is requesting a cap of 12 events per year be placed on today's um, requested approval for any events this property as you're also aware because you conducted a site visit is approximately 131 acres so it is an active farm it is zoned agriculturally bat farms llc is a family entity um, i have mr wedekin with me to my left but also his uh, son and daughter are part of part of bat farms llc and they all live on the property it's a family uh, family occupied property so um i i will uh the only witness that i will be calling today is mr kurt wedekin so with that introduction i will get started with his testimony if that's okay with the board you can proceed Thank you. Mr. Wedekind, please be mindful when you testify that these microphones uh, pick up but do not make it louder for those in the audience. So please make sure that you're speaking up so that everyone can hear. Um, Mr. Wedekind, can you please state your name, spelling your last name, and your address for the record? Yep. It's Michael Kurt Wedekind, uh, W-E-D-E-K-I-N-D. -E -E it's 1733 Wedekind Farm Drive, Westminster, Maryland. Mr. Wedekin, can you just in a few sentences tell the board a little bit about yourself? What do you do? Um, yeah. So we, my wife and I in 87 started a landscaping business. My daughter is running that business and she's been running it for the last five years. We bought a, our first piece of property in Carroll County in 2000, 2001, something like that. Um, we moved our business from Ellicott City to Carroll County in, at that time. Um, we bought the farm uh, in uh, October of 19. 
Um, we've lived on the farm since December of 20, since December of 21. So the business that you just spoke to, the landscaping business, is that or is that not operated at this location? It is not. It's operated in South Carroll. So today you have applied for a country in and event uh, facility, correct? Yes. And you just stated that you brought, bought this property in 2019. Is that accurate? Yes. How many acres approximately is this property? 131. Are you aware of the zoning classification for this property? Yes. And what is that? Agricultural. I one for you to look at. I have handed all the members of the board <clears throat> and Mr. Dixon um, a copy of, a, of several intended exhibits, all of which are marked. I will ask that they be entered appropriately throughout the hearing. I do have, I should have, should have made bigger ones or more copies, but I do have one extra copy that is right here that's available for anyone else to look at as well. Um, I will ask that they be entered throughout the testimony, but I wanted to give them all to you in advance so that you have them for your review. Mr. Wedekind, I'm asking you to look at Applicants Exhibit 1, which is the first page there. Is that, does that appear to your best knowledge to be a copy of the zoning map indicating your property? Yes. Okay. And does that accurately depict the property as in the agricultural district? It does. Okay. I would like to ask that that be entered as Applicants Exhibit 1. We will accept that as applicants exhibit number one. Thank you. Mr. Wedekin, when you purchased the property, was it improved? Did it have structures, a house, anything on it? No. Okay. Since you purchased the pro property, what have you done to improve the property? Um, driveway, electric, well septic, house, barn, uh, fencing for animals. Do you and your family reside in the house on the property? We do. And are you actively farming the property? We are. Is it your intent to continue to reside in this home? It is. It is, is it also your intent to continue the active farming operation at this property? Yes. Okay. The, in Mr. Dixon's introduction of the file, he pointed out the plan that uh, accompanied our application. Is that what you're looking at on the table there? Yes. Okay. Now that plan has the DDC label on it, but who actually prepared uh, the portion related to this hearing here today? Me. Okay. So you used a previous drawing from DDC and overlaid uh, the request here today onto that. Is that accurate? Yes. Are you familiar with preparing and or looking at plans, reviewing plans like this? I am. Can you explain that? Sure. Um, Education-wise, I, I did some of that work. And then we've been either a customer or a contractor with plans like this. Okay. In considering this application and in preparing the plan, did you have the opportunity to take a look at the surrounding area uh, of your property and the zoning and the natural features of the surrounding area? I did. Can you please just generally describe to us the surrounding area? Um, most of the area around us is uh, our farms. I think the smallest farm we have uh, on the northeast and west side is like 18 acres. Um, the largest, I think, is 130 or so. Um, and then we have uh, several six or so houses on the south side that butt up to the property. So I'm going to ask you to turn to, well, actually, I'm jumping the gun here, but I'm going to ask you to turn to first applicants exhibit two. Um, is that a copy just of the same map, just showing the kind of actual earth aerial of the property? Yes. Okay. And does that accurately show where your property is on that map? It does. Okay. I would like to ask that applicants exhibit two aerial map be entered. We will accept that into evidence. 
Mr. Wedekin, I'm, I'm going to turn and show you Applicants Exhibit 3. Okay. To the best of your knowledge, is that a map showing the surrounding agricultural preservation easements on others' properties? It is. Okay. <coughs> I would ask that Applicants Exhibit 3 be entered as well. And we will accept that into evidence. Can you please describe the screening that is present existing today on your property that buffers or shields your property from any surrounding properties? Um, in particular, the southern end, um, which is where there's the six or seven houses are. There's about a 27 acre wooded area that buffers between um, us and them. And then there's another 20 acres of field. And then our house sits behind that. And then the wedding site is, is further away than that. And can you also describe the topography of the whole area, but specific to your property and how that impacts your property? Yeah, it's a Carroll County rolling hills. Uh, I think the elevation change just ballparks probably 60 feet from any swale to any um, hilltop. You heard me state in my introduction that your request here today is for a maximum of 12 events per year. Is that accurate? Yes. Are you asking that this board place a condition on today's requested approval to that effect? Yes. Can you just generally explain the vision of this request? What, what brought you to make this request? Well, excuse me. My oldest got married at the farm uh, two Octobers ago. Um, and since then, we've had some family members ask us if we can do that. And um, just thought we'd come and get permission to see if we can do it. So is it accurate, would it be accurate to say that the request is for events of any nature, nature? Some may be weddings, some may be baby showers, some may be bridal showers? That's right. Okay. Would this approval facilitate the financial continuance of the farm as well? Yes. Now, you submitted this drawing, or I submitted it, with the application. The drawing is to your left. Does the board have, we only have big copies, so you have one. Okay. We're going to walk through the specifics of that. So I have, I'll lay a separate one out down here if anybody needs to look at it as well. Mr. Wedekin, you were looking at the drawing, correct? Yes. Can you explain to us how, how your property is accessed? Uh, off of Walmart Ridge. Okay. Um, there's a private, or uh, a driveway that goes back. Okay. Are you aware, uh, and well, I get, actually, let me ask you, before the road becomes Wilmot Ridge, is it the road named something different? It is. Okay, what is that? Wedekin Farm. Drive. No, well, not your, oh, your Don, drive. Oh, Don. Don. I'm okay. sorry. Okay. So there's Don Avenue that leads into Wilmot Ridge. Is that accurate? Yes. Okay. Are you aware of whether Don Avenue and Wilmot Ridge are county owned and maintained roads? As far as I know. I'm going to ask that you take a look at Applicants Exhibit 4. There's two pages to this. To the best of your knowledge, does that appear to be the list of uh, county roads? Yes. And does that indicate that Don and um, Wilmot Ridge are both county roads? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I would like to ask that applicants exhibit four be entered. We will accept that into evidence. Thank you. So, Mr. Wedekin, you stated that your entrance onto your property is a private access. Is that accurate? That is. Okay. So, it, there's, it does not share an access with any other homes or any other uses? It does not. Okay. Is there a gate at the entrance of your property? There is. Would it be your proposal and intent so that that gate would remain open during any scheduled event? Yes. Okay. Along the driveway, is there room for people to pass if they should need to? If there was uh, one car coming in and somebody needed to be leaving, is there an opportunity for, um, for a pull-off into the grass? Several. Okay. I am going to... Uh, well, can you try to verbally indicate, but the board has the drawing in front of them as well. On the plan, what area do you propose cars to be parked in? Uh, a, we call it field 12. Okay. 
So I'm going to turn you to, and can you kind of just, again, for everybody's sake who's not perhaps looking at the drawing, when, when we enter the driveway, where is area A? Uh, it's halfway down on the left-hand side, on the west side. And what is that now? Just a field. We have cattle in it. Okay, so it's a field. I am going to turn you to applicants exhibits 5A and 5B. Are those photographs of that field now? They are. So now, moving on to, well, let me, let me back up here one quick second. Is it your intent to maintain that area as grass? It is. Field? Okay. Yep. Yep. Will you allow any parking to be on the public road, Wilmot Ridge or Don Avenue? No. Looking at the drawing again, section B, that is labeled in the note section as a potential future barn site. Is there currently anything there? No, it's wooded. Is that an area where you would potentially put a, a barn that would be part of this use at some point in the future? At some point. If that occurs, do, are, do you understand that that would need to go through a permitting mm -hmm. process in compliance with this use? I do. So currently there is no structure in section B that uh, exists for this use, but in the future you might consider constructing an actual building for people to have as an indoor area, yes. correct? Yes. Okay. Section C on the plan, what is, uh, well, the note section on the plan indicates section C as the country and area, cattle, and picture area. Is that where your house is? Yeah, yes. Okay. And is it your intent? to hold a room for rent available within the existing house? Yes. Okay. Do you anticipate that that would be something that could be utilized predominantly by people who are using the facility for events? Uh, yes. Okay. Section D or area D on the plan is an outdoor area. Is that accurate? That is. Okay. I am going to show you. <coughs> Well, actually, did I ask? I'm sorry. If I did not, I'm going to ask that applicants exhibits 5A and 5B be entered, please. We'll accept those into evidence. Thank you. I'm going to turn you, Mr. Wedekin, to applicants exhibit 6A and 6B. Okay. Yep. Are those photographs of the area shown on, on the plan as area D? They are. Okay. So that is an existing field area, correct? Yes. Is it your intent that that will maintain an existing field area? It is. Okay. And that is the area where you would allow someone to utilize for an event. Is that accurate? Yes. So that is where any uh, temporary tent would be put up. Is that accurate? It is. Will you be providing permanent restroom facilities or will you require uh, guests to hire a porta pot service. Yeah, the porta pot. How will guests access this site? Uh, after parking, then we have golf carts that we use to get from A to B, A to D. Is this what you did for your daughter's wedding as well? It is. Okay, so that would be your intent to, for any guests or anyone to be transported or escorted, if you will, from area A, where they will park, to area D, where the actual event would occur. Is that accurate? It is. Okay. Have you considered any potential events where someone wanted to provide food and or alcohol? Yes. Have you thought about how you will regulate that? Uh, a licensed caterer. So, does that mean that you will require anyone utilizing the space to have any alcohol served through a licensed caterer? Yes. Okay. Will you allow music to be played? Yes. You understand that there is a Carroll County noise ordinance that governs any noise, not just for this use, but anyone's, anyone's property, correct? I do. And you understand that you are subject to that as well as the testimony of today's hearing, correct? Yes. Okay. Have you considered having a 
a, an event end time um, where any music and any activity would cease? Yes. Okay. What time have you thought of for that? 10 o'clock. Okay. So would it be fair to say that after a 10 o'clock music end that people would then be cleaning up, getting ready, and then exiting the site? Yes. Okay. Do you, have you considered a number of attendees that you would be comfortable with coming to this site? Yes. And what number have you come up with? Uh, 150 to 200. Okay. And you believe that this can accommodate that amount of people? We do. Now, that number contemplates a higher use type of event. Is it fair to say that there could be several events that you would agree to host that would be significantly less than that maximum number? Yes. Will you have a member of your family present during every event? Yes. In fact, you will still be living in the house, correct? Yes. Okay. You heard, well, it, the request here today was made because you considered this use and you called me and I told you this is what we needed to do. Is that accurate? <coughs> it is. Okay. So there, to your knowledge, there was no zoning complaint. There was no um, zoning investigation that initiated this application. None. Do, have you had the opportunity to take a look at the Ag District and the zoning code for the Ag District? I have. County? Yep. Okay. Is it your understanding that a religious establishment is allowed in the Agricultural District? Yes. And with that type of use, there could be many events associated with that. Do you think that's a fair statement? It is. Do you anticipate, and all of you, you've testified to the characteristics of the use um, and some of the constraints that you are intending to operate with. Um, do you in anticipate that any of the characteristics of these events are worse than other events located in the county? No. Those are my only questions of Mr. Wedekind. Okay, thank you, Mr. Wedekind. Now, one at a time, please go to the microphone if you have questions of Mr. Wedekind's testimony. Again, you'll have the opportunity for your own testimony later, but these are questions of his testimony. And, and please state your name, address, and occupation, and spell for the record your last name. Sure. My name is Shauna Bez. A little bit closer to Shada the Shauna Bez, B-E-Z, and I live at 1007 Sharon Lane. I'm a project manager. Um, question for you is, what are you currently farming? We do no, address us. No. Yes. We do cattle and pigs, and um, we're trying chickens, just not very good at it. Cattle, pigs, and chickens. Chickens. Okay. And do you continue? Do you expect to continue to uh, do that farming? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And do you have a preferred caterer that you plan to use? Not really. How will you be choosing your your caterer, especially if they have a, a license? for beverage? Uh, I would assume we're new at this, so I would assume we'll leave it up to the, uh, the event, whoever the event is. Okay. Um, anyone else have any questions of Mr. Wedekind's testimony? Please go to the microphone. And again, name, address, occupation, and spell for the record your last name. Uh, my name is Larry Alvarez. I live at 2019 Don Avenue. Uh, I'm a teacher. Uh, it's A-L-V-A-R-E-Z. Um, I had a few questions. I, I had to make a, a note. Um, you said a primary residence. If you look on the Maryland Real Property Search right now, it says as a primary residence, no. So that contradicts what Mr. Wedeking has said, is that being as prime ev uh, residence. I am a teacher, so I was home a lot of the summer. There, there were weeks I didn't see his car come in. 
I would see the kids, it seemed almost like they took like uh, turns taking care of the animals. Um, that I'm sure a lot of people will uh, tell you. What, what's your question? That, well, that's testimony. Yeah, okay. My question is, you said it's your primary residence, but is it your primary residence when the real property search on Maryland says no? It is. Um, one more question I had. You said that it, your parties won't be any worse than any others. There's been several occasions the last year and a half where gunfire has extended into the dark in the your night. Question, again, a question. That's testimony. Are you sir. going to shoot guns after dark? No. I had one other question about parking. You had a second wedding, the Whitbeckers, last October. Are people going to park at Deer Park Field and be bussed down like they were for the Whitbecker wedding? I'm not sure what the Woodpecker is. We did that for my daughters. Um, it was just a thought, thing we thought would be better. All I can't right. answer that question. So they, they had people park on Deer that, Park that's Field. That's oh, okay. question. I got you. I got you. Sorry. Um, that's, that's it for now. And, and I didn't mean to cut you no, off, but I, that's I questions. I'm, that you I'm getting have, used to the process, too. Thank yeah, you. you. You'll have the opportunity for that testimony later in the process. I promise you. Okay. Name, address, occupation, and spell for the record your last name. Christina Babylon, 643 Walmart Ridge Road, VP of Marketing, last name is B-A-B-Y-L-O-N. Uh, question is, how are you going to, if there's liquor served at the event, how are you going to monitor and make sure that the neighborhood and people in the neighborhood are safe while they're driving out? Um, the only way that we can, I think, do that and what we're trying to do is if we have a licensed caterer and a licensed bartender, I think the responsibility, from what I understand, again, this is our, we're new at this, um, is falls on them. So I think, I think the, the thought is that they stop, they check for underage drinking, and they stop anybody from drinking past their limit. But I, I, that's all I know. So my question is, as well, how do you plan to monitor so that there are not DUIs, driving under the influence through a neighborhood where there are people and kids that are out and about in their neighborhood to keep them safe. That's all I can tell you. That's, that's my only, I don't know what else to tell you. Thank you. You're welcome. We don't normally leave you ask the second question, but we'll go ahead and do that, okay? Um, Again, identify yep. for the record. Shauna Bez, uh, 1007 Sharon Lane, uh, Westminster 21157, BEZ. I'm a project manager. Um, what other kind of activities do you have on the farm that your um, guests may enjoy? Um, the one thing we do have is uh, we have uh, a, a type of breed of cattle, which is... Um, Scottish Highlands, and the people seem to enjoy getting pictures taken with them. Okay. Do you have a shooting range? Uh, no. Do yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Take. You don't have to take a number. Just approach the microphone. Six fifty Wilmot Ridge Road. Uh, I'm a manager. A little bit closer to the microphone, sir. Okay. Do you need me to repeat that? Yes, please. Keith Eisman, 650 Wilmot Ridge Road. Uh, I'm a manager. And spell for the record your last name. E-Y-S-A-M-A-N. Is the only access to this facility off of Wilmot Ridge Road? Yes. Do you believe entering and exiting your facility provides enough space to not impact other residents? Yes. Are you aware that uh, there have been numerous um, complaints and calls made for running over people's yards? I'm not. Are you aware that during one of your wedding events that you had, there was a vehicle that drove through a resident's yard? I don't. That's it. Good morning. Cheryl Barnes, 2003 Don Avenue, uh, B-A-R-N-E-S, and I'm retired. 
Um, I have a question for the zoning board. Um, no, you no know, questions of his testimony. Of his testimony? Yes, ma'am. Oh, he said 12 events a year. Um, if it was very successful, would you apply to the zoning for um, more, um, no, more use? No, ma'am. Okay. Um, and how many cars do you think each event would put on the street? It's hard to say, but if you said it was uh, 200 people and it's uh, two, four people in a car, it could be 50 to 100. Uh, have you made any attempt to um, communicate with the community here and see what their feelings are about this event? I have not. Uh, thank you very much. You're welcome. Larry Alvarez, 2019 Don Avenue, uh, A-L-V-A-R-E-Z. I'm a teacher. I have one more question um, from Mr. Weta King. I, I understand that you or one of your entities might own a distillery. Will, that, will those be sold or used at the parties? No, we were we were going to start a distillery um, down at our other piece of property, and then we found out that my son was allergic to all the ingredients, so we kind of kiboshed it. Thank you. You're welcome. Hello, my name is Kim Allenbaugh, A-L-L-E-N-B-A-U-G-H. I live at 651 Wilmot Ridge Road, and I am a CPA. Um, I wanted to see, um, just to clarify, that if this is an event center that's mostly supposed to be family events, the also, I was also listening and heard that this would support their farming, you know, it would be agribusiness to support the farm. Will you plan to charge your family to have events at your event center? Yes. The parking that you have um, delineated is on the size of a hill, on, on the side of a hill. Um, the Google Maps pictures <coughs> show it along the driveway on the far side of the stream from Wilmot Ridge. Do you, have you parked anybody there yet? If you look at this map, these, uh, these topo lines are probably, uh, let's see. It's probably over on the other side. Yeah. It might be, it shows here on, on this map the topography lines. And as the lines get further apart, it means it's a, it's a less steep of a hill. As they get closer, it means it's a more steep of a hill. It's probably one of the flattest spots we have on the farm. <clears throat> Do you feel that there's room for 50 to 75 cars in that space? And are you concerned about it being soft in the spring when weddings and things might be um, more desirable? To answer your first question, it's two and a half acres. So I would think that comfortably you could get 100 cars in two and a half acres. Um, the answer to your second question is that we graze cattle on this field. So we're not going to do anything that's going to wreck that area um, that's going to impact our our cattle sure. so we would have to do something else either right. cancel or whatever so you you're putting i it's awesome so it seems then that if there has been a period of rain say in may and you have a 200 person uh, 150 person max wedding that you're going to have 50 to 75 cars you're not sure where you're going to put because you can't impact your cattle's field I didn't say that. I said we would just come up with another plan or we would cancel the wedding. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead, <laughs> sir. My name is Marty Allenball. I live at 651 Wilmot Ridge Road. I'm a senior advisor, a financial planner. Uh, last name is spelled A-L-L-E-N-B-A-U-G-H. I have a question for Kurt. Do you need to apply for a permit for each event that you're conducting on this site? I don't believe so. I think that if we, as long as we stay under 12, that, that's Well, the, I'll jump in and answer briefly. That is the purpose of this hearing. If he did not apply for this, then yes, he would be obligated to apply individually through the zoning administrator for each event. Okay. My name is Dennis Curl. I live at 1900 Don Avenue, Westminster, Maryland, 21157. Spell for the record your last name, sir. K 
K-E-I-R-L-E. Okay. Okay, my question is, is um, I know you own uh, Arbor Valley uh, Business. I think it's located in Sykesville. Uh, I'd like to know if you're interested or going to move all your equipment from there up to this farm to help you do your farming. I don't own Arbor Valley anymore. My daughter does. She's sitting right back here. Okay, she um, lives there too, right? Right. And to answer your question, we have 14 acres of industrial land in uh, Woodbine at 97, um, and there's no reason for us, nor do we have any <coughs> thought of moving the landscaping business to the home farm. Okay, thank you. Lisa Clatterbuck, 710 Reney Drive, Westminster, Maryland, 21157, C-L-A-T-T-E-R-B-U-C-K. Have a quick question regarding the second wedding where Mr. Alvarez mentioned there were people bused to the Deer Park fields. Were you aware there's no parking after dark? And, or did you maybe get some kind of special permission from the county or whoever you would need to to park there? to have your guests park there. I'm gonna object to that. I don't mind him answering, but he testified that the parking for these events will be on this property, so I don't think it's relevant, uh, the parking that did occur that he spoke to at Deer Park. I, I, I agree with you, Ms. Miller, uh, uh, that it, he has testified that he will not use utilize that as a parking area. And, and the other, th that'd be testimony, I'm sorry. Okay, any, anyone else have any questions of Mr. Wedekind's testimony? <clears throat> Can I ask him a few questions? Yeah, and in follow up. Uh, yes. I didn't know if you wanted to do that now or wait until after the board has asked. I think um, to the extent it might address some of your questions in okay, anticipation. Okay, go, go ahead, Ms. Miller. Okay, thank you. Mr. Wedekind, <clears throat> you were asked by a few, um, a few citizens about shooting on the property. Do you shoot guns on your property? We do. Do you do that legally and licensed? We are. Is it your intent to ever do that during an event? It's not. You were also asked about parking in the field and about uh, the potential for that to change. Um, was that just to the extent that if parking were to ruin that field, you would then need to reevaluate this business decision? That's right. Um, so as long as the parking still allows the cattle to graze there at other times, then that will be the area that will, will be utilized for parking. And, and if there comes a point in time when that is no longer feasible, then you will come back to this board for some kind of modification and show them a new area for parking. Is that accurate? It is. Okay. You understand that to the extent you deviate from your approval, by this board if they were to grant this approval that you would need to request a modification of this board yes okay thank you okay board members questions of mr wedekin's testimony mr caldwell uh, good morning sir um i have a question concerning exhibit a and b uh in exhibit a could you tell me what direction this picture was taken in which way is the, the camera pointing yeah no are you looking i'm sorry five the Six, A. Six, sorry. Okay. Uh, that's actually looking back towards like Hook Road. So if you're standing here where the picture, where the camera is, Hook Road, that 136 acres is behind this picture. Do you have any idea how far away that house is? It's shown in the picture. Yeah, yes, sir. I, it, it, uh, just a guess. I would say that from my house to, the, to Wilmot is about 1,800 to 2,000 feet. Um, from there, from that structure to that house is probably close to a mile. All right. And the other question I have is for, for your event areas. Yes, sir. Um, you mentioned that you're possibly <clears throat> building a barn in the future. How far? We, that's just what we were thinking. So we were thinking of, of a bank barn type of structure, um, but that's. We're not doing that anytime soon. It's just a proposed that if, in case we do it. 
Okay. We, we uh, wanted to, I'll, I'll jump in and answer that briefly, Mr. Caldwell. We wanted to ensure that if and when Mr. Wedekin ever does construct that barn there, that that does not initiate a modification as long as no other characteristics of the use have changed. So that's why we wanted to show that area to you and let you know that at one point in time that there might be a permit application for a barn that Mr. Wedekin would need to go through that process and would still be in compliance with this approval. That barn would be used for events if the weather's bad or something like that. Is that sure. true? Correct. Yeah. Okay. So back to my original question was how far away is that from the properties that are adjoining you? So um, I actually, uh, I actually prepared something if you to answer your question if you would like to see it. Please. Are we up to exhibit seven? Thanks. Mr. Wedekind, I'm showing you what has been marked as applicants exhibit seven. I'm going to pass around, sorry. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Wedekin, does that show the approximate distance line from the middle of your property where that potential future barn is to your closest property line of, a, of any residents? It does. Okay, and does that, what measurement does that show? 987.6. Okay, that, and Mr. Caldwell, that is from the county's GIS mapping <coughs> system that shows that. So I would like to ask that that map be entered as applicants exhibit seven, please. And we will accept that into evidence. Thank you. And just, just to clarify, um, the distance is from the closest property to the center of your property? Yes. Where That's where your residence is, is that correct? It, it's kind of in the middle of those two, C and B. Yes, sir. So the barn would be closer? No. Mm -mm. The barn, did you say? Yes. Yes, sir. It would, it would not be closer than that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very well. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Let me jump in here. Um, Mr. Voigt, <coughs> what is the requirement, what are the setback requirements in the code for an event like this, for an event center like this? sure if 6A and 6B have been entered in evidence. I don't know. Thank, <laughs> thank you, Mr. Dr. Dixon. While we're waiting on Mr. Voigt, may I ensure that applicants exhibit 6A and 6B were entered? That after well, she had I'm not sure. Well, if we'll just double, we'll, we'll, double. We'll, 6A and 6B uh, will be entered into evidence. Thank you. Is this just a second copy? That's a second yes. copy. Okay. Thank you. Okay. There are other uses, which this is what qualifies that underneath um, at the, uh, the front yard setbacks, uh, normally 50 feet, sides are 100, and the rear yard is 50. Otherwise, um, there's a setback of uh, 200 feet. 200 feet. So, th so th there is no variance request here, and there's no variance needed in this request for <coughs> the uh, conditional use for a country in an event so facility. Okay. No. Thank you. I just wanted, I wanted that clarification. Um, any questions, Mr. Simmons? No. Ms. Eckerd. I just want to clarify. You indicated, and, and I may be asking the same question that somebody's already asked and answered, that primarily your driver for pursuing this was for family members. 
But you, I'm assuming you fully also anticipate having members of the public have events here as well, not just limited to family members. Okay. Thank you. Well, we do have a pretty large family. Understood. Mr. Snyder? No questions. Very good. A any rebuttals, Ms. Miller? Okay. No, thank you. At this point, and I promised you this, this moment would come, mm -hmm. you will have the opportunity to go to the microphone, identify yourself, state your name, address, occupation, spell for the record your last name, and you may give testimony. And then after you finish your testimony, stay at the microphone. Ms. Miller will have the opportunity to ask you questions of your testimony, as will the board. So there's the microphone, guys. Go ahead and form a line, and uh, we'll... I promised you this was coming. I know you doubted me. Hi, Christina Babylon, 643 Wilmont Ridge Road, Westminster, uh, VP of Marketing, last name B-A-B-Y-L-O-N. Um, my property is um, backing up to the Whittakine uh, property. Um, as you've heard many people here talking about two events that happened. Um, the music went well into the night past 11 o'clock. I heard it inside my house with the windows closed. So I'd like to know how um, and what are, is the recourse if that happens again? That's really a question. Um, Mr. Voigt, would you want to address that? Mr. Mr. Voigt is our zoning administrator and he deals with the code and I think he can answer those questions, or those technical questions uh, better than we can as a board here. He'll get it right. Um, if uh, there is a violation of the noise ordinance or if someone feels there is a violation of the noise ordinance, uh, the correct procedure would be call the Carroll County Sheriff's Department and they would investigate, determine if there is a violation and if there is, they could issue a citation for it. So it doesn't stop it, it's just a citation? Well, as it, it should stop it or you can should. get cited again or arrested. Okay. The other question is, which is a question I had before, we're talking about 150 to 200 people. So we're talking maybe 50, 75 cars. This is a neighborhood that has one lane in or one road in, one road out. Uh, oftentimes um, it's one lane where people have to wait for the other person to pass because it's a neighborhood road. Um, has there been any studies or anything to look at this to see <clears throat> if it's an adequate road in and out? Um, the one thing I do want to point out, recently um, in the past year or so, there was an accident on the road. Um, it shut down the road for over an hour, and um, if we're talking about this traffic coming in and out, the people on the other side of that accident did not have access to any type of medical emergency if something would happen. So how are we going to eliminate that? And then two, we're also bringing this many people in um, where there's alcohol being served. Um, in past testimony, there's no um, recourse or plan on how to keep the neighborhood safe. And if there is someone that has drank too much, keep them off the road. So that is a concern that you have <laughs> many people coming in and out of the neighborhood, one lane road, um, oftentimes, who were drinking at an event. And then you have children and people in the neighborhood that this is their home, and you're really subjecting them to a dangerous situation. Ms. Miller, any questions of Ms. Babylon's testimony? No questions, but I actually did want to ask Mr. Voigt one follow-up question to the okay, noise. Okay, we'll, we'll do that as, uh, okay. after we get okay. finished with Ms. Babylon. Okay. Board members, any questions of Ms. Babylon's testimony? No. Thank you. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Ms. Miller, you have a follow-up question for no. Mr. Voigt. Yes, Mr. Voigt, is it also true that in addition to the noise ordinance, if this board were to place some sort of timing condition 10 p.m. say on an event end um, or music end that that would be also be something that the county could enforce uh, that is correct if the board placed a condition on the use of this property for this use any violations of those conditions would be a zoning violation which my office would enforce with which also involves if non-compliant issuance of fees, possibly up to $1,000 a day. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> name, address, occupation, and spell for the record your last name. 
Hi, I'm Abigail DeSalvo Kane, which is D I S A L V O hyphen C A I N. I live at 701 Deer Park Road, which is Westminster 21157. I own a holistic center. I did not take the oath because I didn't think okay. I was going to speak. Okay, thank you for your <laughs> honesty because I only about 40% of you stood up. Could you please raise your right hand? Do you swear affirmed under the penalties of perjury that you, your testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Okay, very good. And just get a little bit, speak a little bit louder, please. Okay, sorry, I have a soft voice. Um, so I live at, on Deer Park Road where Don Avenue and Deer Park Road meet. And the traffic there is absolutely overwhelming, as it is. Um, I have to get my mail on Don Avenue, and it's gotten so bad that I make my husband get it because trying to deal with the traffic coming off of Don Avenue and the traffic on Deer Park Road is like taking your life into your own hands. So I just wanted to point out that the idea of 100 or even 50 to 75 more vehicles coming out of that road to me just seems over the top and I don't know um, the woman before me was asking about has the traffic impact been studied so um, I just wanted to express my concern about the traffic because I, I just think it's already I think it's dangerous I really do and we also have the people coming when the games end at the rec center we have people exiting for that and all of these events seem to happen on a weekend so, you know, that's all I wanted to point out. Thank you. Okay, wait a minute, just stay there. Ms. Miller, any questions of her testimony? No, thank you. Board members, questions of her testimony? Could you say your name again? <coughs> Abigail DeSalvo Cain. What, uh, spell your last name? D I, capital S is in Sam, A L V O, and then it's hyphen C A I N. And you did sign in on the sheet. On I the did not. Oh, make sure that you sign in there. So okay. please sign the clipboard there, and that way, if Mr. Dixon has any questions, he can he can refer to that. All right. I'm actually going to grab my stuff, do that, and leave because I have to go to work. Okay, so thank you. <laughs> thank you. Good morning. This is Kim Allenbaugh, A L L E N B A U G H. I live at 651 Wilmot Ridge Road and I am a CPA. Um, I had a question about finishing the property up at the road. I didn't know if the Wedekinds had plans for lighting and signage uh, to indicate their, their event center. Could I address this, yeah, th this is the opportunity for, for you to um, <coughs> give your testimony. Well, we can go the other way then. Yeah, yeah. I'm concerned about yes, there you the go. lighting um, and the signage. I'm sure it would be tasteful um, and uh, they do things a hundred percent out. I'm, a, I'm concerned because of the topography of, um, of our neighborhood. So um, my house sits directly as you face the, their driveway. I live directly to the right. Their driveway um, cuts through the back uh, of, the, of my, well, it's not of my property, but it's certainly within sight. So in my backyard, the first 200 yards, 500 yards, um, align my property. Um, so there, the screening that exists there, um, he spoke of screening and there being woods and there being fields, that's um, great in the spring and summer, but it's just, um, it's woods. And so as the leaves fall and things, it's not thick. You know, you, I can see their traffic going in and out. Their lights for the cars go in and out through the backyard, through my house. Um, and so then uh, the Kim and Keith Eisman who live across the street from them, um, I get all of the lights in my bedroom window because of the hill. Um, so the, the sec my, my bedroom window is the second floor. It's level with the street. So as the cars come in, the lights come through my house. And as they go out, it would completely illuminate the entire front of Kim and Keith Eisman's house, I believe. Um, so I just, I have a concern about the lighting that would be 
there as well, lining the driveway and you know, changing essentially the neighborhood um, <clears throat> from being that rural to being more um, urban. Um, I wanted to let you know as well that because the, his driveway goes down the hill to the stream and then up into the field and then he's got his facility up at the top of the hill. So it may be a mile or so, but it, the acoustics, they call it Twin Valley, um, and you know, pretty much if somebody sings loudly at his house, we can hear it. Um, so when um, Ms. Babylon gave testimony that we've had, they've had music, outdoor music, that it, it shook the windows of my house. So it's not like it's loud and you can hear it, because any of your neighbors might do that. Um, it's, it's excessive. And um, so I wanted to let you know. Uh, the other thing is, is it's not just the six houses that border his property to the south that then are affected by whatever noise is being made, but also the houses that are off of Hook Road and off of Sharon Lane. Um, it's actually much louder there. Um, I have friends up that way, and they will call me and say, what is happening in your neighborhood? So it's, um, it's, a, it's a concern. Um, I did want to point out as well that there are no sidewalks all the way down Don Avenue, all the way around Wilmot Ridge, and the neighbors walk. Um, we walk our dogs. We push our kids in strollers. The kids ride bikes. Um, and there's no speed bumps, um, and it's got a big, long straightaway down Don Avenue. You really have to watch that you don't get a bunch of speed going. Um, and then come around the way. So I have been taking some pictures of the deliveries they are already having made. And some um, earlier, uh, last week, they had two pallets of agricultural materials delivered to the street um, on a semi-trailer. So we had a great big you know, truck that would deliver groceries or you know, like one of the great big ones um, through the neighborhood. Um, I've got a picture of a water delivery, so, and the delivery vans will park on the wrong side of the road to be close to where they need to pile the things for the family, and um, they block the road, so I had to drive on the wrong side of the road at 7.45 in the morning around the corner to get past the delivery truck, and they don't just stop, and you know, sometimes it takes them a minute to find their stuff, so, you know, it could be 20 minutes. Um, and the, the school bus goes right through there. So the school <coughs> bus, if there are deliveries being made when they're there, um, you know, will also have to drive on the wrong side of the road in order to get by. Um, I, think, I think that the neighbors may, well, I'm gonna speak for myself. I feel that there is often no limit on what on how the Wedekinds choose to enjoy their property. Um, it's not like we're going to have a party and it's going there's going to be some people. There's going to be 150 people. Um, you know, we're going to shoot guns because we can. Um, the November of 2021, before they moved in, they had some friends over to their firing range. And I think that there will be people in this room who can confirm they started around 10 o'clock in the morning and they shot guns like the OK Corral until 5.30 or 6 o'clock at night, at which time I did call the police. Because it was excessive. It wasn't an hour. It wasn't 20 minutes. Um, they've had quad bikes or ATVs that they have enjoyed using on the property and have used the driveway as a roller coaster. So we're not here to complain about them. I'm here to tell you that I have been unable to feel comfortable coming to some agreement <clears throat> on being neighbors and what that means in terms of sharing our space. When I, I, I was told if I wanted it quiet, I should have bought the property. So that didn't start us off well. And I mean to go on well. I want to live peacefully and let people do what they want to do so long as it doesn't impact how I use my home and how my family can use our neighborhood. Um, I think we've also been concerned that any changes to the zoning might affect our property values or they might affect our tax bases. And I'm not in a position to know even who to call and ask about how this being an event center is actually gonna affect me financially. So um, I did contact 
the um, mediation center through Carroll County um, and spoke um, last fall uh, at length with somebody and they were willing to bring the parties together to kind of make an accommodation about the shooting. And I declined to go forward <laughs> because I didn't feel that I affected him in any way. And so he really had nothing that he needed to give me that we needed to, to balance. And so I thought it was going to be sort of a waste of time. So thank you for your time. Um, and I appreciate that. Um, Okay, Ms. State, stay at the microphone. Yes, sir. Ms. Miller, do you have any questions of her testimony? I do not, Mr. Bale. Thank you. Board members, Mr. Caldwell. Uh, good morning, uh, Ms. Allen Bell. Did you at any time contact the police? Yes, sir. Did you file a formal complaint? They came out to the. They came out and spoke to Kurt uh, regarding the shooting incident of the pre-season, pre-hunting season Sunday. Okay. Did you contact the police about noise when they had the wedding events? I have not. And the first reason was that we knew full well that that first wedding was his daughter's wedding. We actually sat outside and grilled and helped his guests find his driveway because they couldn't, they, they weren't expecting the turn and they come and they turn around in the other people's driveways when they realize they've missed it. So, you know, I waved you know, friendly like I waved at the you know bridal party coming in in their in their um, limousines and things. So um, we did not call obviously for their wedding because that would have been mean. Um, and then it just becomes a little hard to call. Uh, you just keep hoping it will stop. Um, Kurt has suggested if I'm annoyed, I should call 911. And I you know I don't find that that's really how you want to live. You, know, you kind of hope that it's just going to die down. And I do feel that the events have become less prominent as, uh, you know, they have maybe they had an open house or maybe they've had some smaller events. And you'd expect them to enjoy their property as a family. You know, making it a business um, makes me feel as though the promise that was made to me when we bought the house in 2001 which was that I was moving into a quiet neighborhood that had an agricultural remainder behind me. You know, um, I enjoyed a number of years with it being empty. Um, and we were delighted that we were going to have new neighbors. And he introduced himself and his son. And we shook hands and said, you know, have a good time. But it's just got beyond us, honestly, because it's not the way neighbors use their houses, typically, at least in our neighborhood. Did I answer your question, mm -hmm. sir? Yes, thank you. Any questions? I, I, no, thank Mrs. you. Mr. Snyder? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. I, I see a hand up back there. Can, uh, I just have a quick question. Is there a time limit we're working on in this meeting? Is there a time frame? N there's no time frame, why? Well, I, just, I know a lot of people want to talk and give a testimony. I just want everybody to be aware if, if there was a time frame we had to work with them to try to get, you know. So yeah, thank you. Yeah, we, okay. okay. Go ahead, so sir. Be quick. Hi, Steve Barnes, B A R N E S, live at 2003 Don Avenue, and I'm retired. So, my comment or concern maybe is more for the county. Uh, Don Avenue was built in the 60s, early 60s, for limited access to residents. Over the years, it's been expanded several times, and adjoining properties have been granted access. And to my knowledge, all that's been for private residents, maybe some farm access. <coughs> so the concern I have, as many people do, is the traffic that's going to be generated. And as many have already said, particularly up near uh, Deer Park Road, a lot of folks park on the street. And a lot of times you have to wait to get in and out. Sometimes both sides are blocked. So it's going to be kind of risky and it would be sketchy having a party event with 50 to 100 cars. So with that said, I, you know, I suspect that land was landlocked or the original access may have been off of Nelson Road. So has there been any consideration to have that access used for the events versus Don Avenue? So something for the county to consider. 
Good. Ms. Miller, any questions? No questions, thank you. Okay. Mr. Voigt wants to add something. Mr. Voigt. Uh, yes, the, uh, just so everybody knows that if he does receive approval today for a country in an event center, um, he still has to go through a site plan process with the county where different items will be checked off um, and looked at roads, entrance, um, use of the property, building structures and stuff. That all gets looked at um, after he gets approval. <clears throat> okay. Well, is, was the original access on that property from Nelson Road? I have no idea. Mm -hmm. I don't either. Was it off of Don Avenue when you purchased it or off of Wilmot? I, the, I, I can answer just to my knowledge. I took a look at the subdivision plats and it shows, I mean, it, it, it shows this agricultural piece back Wilmot Ridge. Right. So to our knowledge, this is the access for the site. I mean, I'm not going to say that we wouldn't be receptive to exploring other options, but to our knowledge, this is our option to access. Well, it, I suspect that it is since Wilmot Ridge was built, right. but that's recently in the last decade or two. Going back in the 60s when Don Avenue was a uh, quarter mile long, you know, it's been added on too many times. Right. So the concern is the original street, small homes, small development, and it's grown. And now we're going to utilize it for other purposes beyond private residence. That's my primary concern. Thank you. Board members, any questions of Mr. Barnes' testimony? No. Mr. Barnes, real quick. Yeah. Was that, was Don Avenue named after someone? Donald Bullock. Donald, Donald, Donald Bullock. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just, just wondering. Okay. Yeah. Right on the corner. Don has a. I, I, and I don't want. Stage. Don't hold this against me, but I'm friends with your oldest brother, so. <laughs> Today's his birthday. <laughs> and you told me that. Thanks. You've, you've got a hand up, sir. Yes. Everybody keeps talking about the maps and all, and the situation is. But the road is only Wilmot Ridge Road and Don Avenue. It's only like 25 feet wide. Wait, wait, uh, so, yeah, that's that's testimony. So if you want to tell us about that, please go to the microphone and and tell us. Okay, so get, go ahead and get in line, and and that that's testimony, and you're more than welcome to go to the mic and 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 share that with us. My name is uh, Marty Allenball. I'm at 651 Wilmot Ridge Road. Last name spelled A L L E N B A U G H, senior advisor. My only my comment, uh, to be short, would be for the board, it is three quarters of a mile from Deer Park Road all the way down, kind of snaking through these different developments to this property. So it's not off of a, a major road. And I'm concerned about the 100 to 150 cars kind of coming into this development. As mentioned earlier, and you've, you've been out to the property, you've seen the area, there are no sidewalks. So families do walk that circle and walk Don Avenue, uh, especially on the weekends, Fridays and Saturdays. It's pretty, uh, pretty crowded on that road, and I'm I'm just very concerned about uh, someone getting hurt or a fatality occurring there because of uh, the amount of distance to the property, just to the top of it, and also the, the amount of traffic on a weekend. Ms. Miller, any questions? No questions. Thank you. Board members. No. Very good. Thank you. Hello, my name is Joe Swartz, S-W-A-R-T-Z. I reside at 631 Wilmot Ridge Road. Um, I just want to echo the concern that everybody else has about traffic coming into the neighborhood. Uh, I got three little kids. I've been at the property for three years. We all use the road. We all bicycle, walk, walk the dog. It's tight back there. It's tight. You know, you get one weekend a month, having 100 cars come in and out of there, something's going to happen. And I'm, I'm against that. I don't, I don't care what you do on your property. That's fine. But bringing traffic into our neighborhood kind of sucks. That's, that's all. Ms. Miller? No questions. Thank you. Board members? Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Um, wait, wait, get to the microphone. Now you can start. I'm on it. Um, I didn't stand up earlier to test, give my testimony, so I want to make you aware of that. Oh, you, oh, you didn't take the oath? No. Perhaps we could take this oh, opportunity I'm if there's prepared anyone to do else that. Out yeah, there yeah, yeah. At my own risk. Yeah, but, <laughs> if but, I but, might be so bold, minute. Mr. If there's anyone that intends to testify that didn't take the oath the first time, could you please stand? It's only you. Okay. 
Please raise your right Always hand. Always the one. Raise your right hand, sir. Do you swear or affirm under penalties of perjury that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Very good, and I appreciate your honesty. Certainly. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, name, first of all, address, <laughs> occupation, okay. and spell for the record your last name. Dennis Curl, 1900 Don Avenue, Westminster, Maryland, 21157. Um, my occupation, I work for Toyota Motor Sales, uh, inventory control. Uh, and it's K-E-I-R-L-E. Okay. Okay. First of all, I'd like to say I don't know Mr. Whittakin. I don't know your family. Uh, but as a neighbor, I walk him to the neighborhood. Okay. Um, personally, this is nothing personal. Okay. This is just about a residential neighborhood that we've worked hard to move into and live for our families. Um, I like to say I have two daughters still living with me and I have three young grandchildren, eight, six, and two, and I have a dog. And they're on their bikes. We walk the dog a lot. The kids are around the neighborhood. They're young. And my concern is the traffic and their health and well-being. Okay, I'm very concerned about that and what's going to be left in our neighborhood after the events. And at the bottom of Don Avenue, there's a stream, okay? And you folks came there, right? You came down Don, you could see that curve, that bend. When you come down Don Avenue, that's a steep, long hill, and you pick up speed. I don't care who you are, you're over the speed limit coming down that hill, coming around that bend. Or the opposite way, when you're leaving, it's the same thing, and that's a, that's a sharp bend. It wasn't really meant for a lot of traffic. And my concern is, when people come to these events, especially when there's alcohol provided, coming down that bend to leave, there's going to be problems. Somebody's going to end up running into Mr. Alvarez's house or into the creek or hitting somebody else that's coming as they're leaving. So that is, that's a serious concern I think we all need to address and think about. Thank you very much. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. I I, uh, no, he's okay. I do not have any questions. Thank I you, Mr. Bale. Board members? Okay, you're dismissed. Thank you. <laughs> All right, well, good afternoon. Uh, I'm John McNamara. I live at 645 Wilmot Ridge Road, uh, MCNAMARA. Uh, I'm an IT manager at a local hospital system. Uh, so we back to your property. Uh, we're one of, you know, I think there's probably 400 feet of trees or so. During the summer, it's, you know, there's no light pollution or anything like that. But during the fall and winter, uh, I think your property or uh, the lights for the everything are on 24 hours a night and there are a day. So is there any ordinances about light pollution as well? Just because those, you know, during the uh, seasons that are not, you know, summer and spring, there's a lot of light pollution that comes right into the Mr. Back of our house. Mr. Voigt will go ahead and answer that question. For uh, residential uses, there are no light ordinances for the county. Yeah, I didn't think so. And just... for commercial uses, which this would be subject there, they will need to show lighting on the site plan, and uh, and that will be part of the uh, official documents for the property. Okay. But for residential uses as it stands right now and agricultural uses on the property, there's no requirements for lighting whatsoever. And also, I mean, just like everyone else, I mean, the traffic, the noise, I mean, uh, we haven't been here that long, maybe about a year and a half to two years, and during the couple of events that they have been, the music has gone later than normal, or than, than I expect, so, you know, I just want to reiterate that. Thank you. But, uh, Mr. Voigt, do you want to sh share with him the, uh, you said you referenced the site plan. So a site plan will be developed if it's under 5,000 square foot of, correct me if I'm wrong here, Mr. Boyd, uh, if it's under 5,000 square feet of disturbance, it'll be a simplified site plan uh, that can be signed off by either the director of planning or the chairman of the planning after it goes through the technical review committee. If it's over 5,000 feet of disturbance, uh, then it'll go before the full planning commission and at that point before that it goes to the technical review committee the plan does and then it goes forward to the planning commission which is another citizen planning group 
that it'll have to be approved by. Okay. Thank okay. You. I just I and I yeah. I did that so that everyone understands. When we say site plan, we understand what the process is, mm -hmm. but you all may not understand what the process is. That's why I wanted to make sure that everyone was clear on that. Mr. Chairman, may I make a comment on that? Yeah. What did I What did I mess up? Yeah. I didn't say you messed oh, up. Okay. Anything. <laughs> I would just like to add something to it. Okay. Good, very good. Um, when they go before the site plan process and everything, and the technical review committee, and uh, the Planning and Zoning Commission, they are public hearings that the public can come to and comment at. Okay. All right. Thank you. Good morning again. Cheryl Barnes. Yeah, give it, give, Ms. Barnes, there you go. <laughs> 2003 Don Avenue. Uh, I'm retired, and the spelling is B-A-R-N-E-S. Uh, Mr. Wiedigan, uh I've lived there 42 years. Uh, my husband was Steve back there. His father actually developed the, that property back there, and we weren't aware of access for you to even build the property that you do have. We were very surprised, um, and uh, so were a lot of neighbors to find uh, that uh, we found out by uh, your trucks coming in during construction, and they uh, uh, didn't show good manners for the neighborhood. They came in fast. We tried to flag them down. They asked them to stop, slow down. Um, and I got all your mud because the stream is on my property, and when it rains, everything comes down the street onto my property. Uh, and that road is terrible there. It floods out quite frequently. And I don't want to stop anybody from making a living or having a business. What you are planning um, sounds like a very nice thing. Uh, a lot of neighbors here have parties. A uh, third of us have gone to high school together and have lived there as long as I have. My father-in-law has built a lot of their homes. And we always thought it would be residential. Um, the traffic uh, from your trucks alone during your construction uh, broke up the road, caused a pothole, and it took forever to get that mended. Um, so now you're asking us to uh, endure more construction with a barn and um, whatever uh, catering trucks, porta pots 12 times a year. Um, it's very difficult. You know, a lot of us make noise. We have, I myself, we had a lot of, uh, once a year had pig roast. Um, we, sh we all shoot guns. Most of us are armed down there. It's kind of crazy. Um, but uh, we find it very difficult uh, that a residential area is being asked to accommodate 12 times a year, uh, 70, 100 cars, plus all the construction. And uh, also, uh, a lot of us are a bit um, put out that you didn't contact any of us and, uh, you know, uh, talk to us. We're nice people. We get together a lot, and uh, maybe uh, today could have been avoided. So, thank you. Wait a minute. Ms. Miller, any questions? Okay, ask me a question. I have no questions. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Board members? Seeing none. Okay. Uh, thank, thank you, Mrs. Barnes. The, the Nelson Drive access because it would probably, um, since there's commercial property on there anyway, might be better with handling. This is like my biggest nightmare, so bear with me. Um, I'm not a public speaker whatsoever, but this just shows you how important this is to me and my family. Um, Name? 641. 641 Wilmot Ridge Road. My name is Mary Jividen, G-I-V-I-D-N. I'm a veterinary technician, as well as a mother to four awesome children, one of which is special needs, who has been known to um, elopement, basically. It's in his IEP. He, he will wander. I do my best to keep him um, at home. Haven't had an issue with it before. Prior to you purchasing the property, he did wander down to the creek because he is drawn to water. He has autism as well as fragile X syndrome. So my concern with that, granted it is your property and he shouldn't be on it, that there's that possibility of, of wandering. As well as I believe there may even be a senior care on Don Avenue where at one point there was a gentleman that got lost in the neighborhood. So there are wanderings in that area. Um, the noise, initially I was told, I've never spoken to any of the Wetakine family at all. Um, the, the owners previous to that would send us notes saying, hey, we're gonna log back there, you're gonna hear some noise as a common courtesy. Um, so I never heard of anything, so I heard through neighbors that 
there was going to be a farm there, a working farm. They were going to have long, long horn cattle, whatever. And I was like, oh, that sounds awesome. That's great. You know, that's what this area is all about. Um, then there was the wedding, and I was like, and there, I was told it was the the daughter's wedding. I was like, oh, okay. You know, again, even if it went past eleven, it's a wedding. I don't mind once in a while having that. Then there was another wedding. I sat out on my back porch, and I was on Facebook, and I said, wow, it feels like I'm at an event right now. It's so loud. Granted, you say there's a buffer, that buffer being the creek again. Well, it almost acts as a conduit for the noise. I can hear people talking on your farm, literally. And, you know, so the noise is, is certainly a problem, and I realize that that may not be what could hinder this in any way, shape, or form. But the traffic is the main concern, is the safety of my children. My daughter is just now starting to play with some of the neighbors and will go around the corner. I will watch her. I am, unfortunately, one of those helicopter parents because I have to be. And so I watch her, but she wants to be independent. Okay, well, he's going to have a wedding. Uh, nope, kids, sorry, stay inside. Go play on the backyard. I don't want you on the street. I don't know these people. I don't know these people that are drinking. Because drinking happens at weddings. Drinking happens at corporate <clears throat> parties. Drinking happens at a lot of parties, unless it is one that doesn't include that. And people drink and drive. It's unfortunate, but it happens. And it is a small neighborhood, and that road is tiny. And it's treacherous. Um, it, and conditional use permits state that zoning board concludes that the new use of the property will be in the public interest. I want to know how the wedding venue in our little neighborhood is in the public interest. It's not in my interest. I could tell you that. Um, location is paramount. I've seen the Instagram photos. I've seen um, other things that are under the Wetakan name, Wetakan Farm. I've seen hashtag wedding venue. I've seen hashtag organic farmers market. Are we planning on having a farmers market <clears throat> there too? I don't know. Um, that would also increase daily traffic. Um, the barn that is a pole barn that is used to have hay stored up top is not really a pole barn. That's where the wedding is held. There's a big, huge barn a big huge bar in there um there was dancing that was the, the 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 area it was not a tent that was put up it was in the barn the lights just as another gentleman mentioned i see the lights all the time um the shooting obviously you know again when you first moved in there all the noise that was produced by the banging that constant barrage of banging of poles for the, the fencing, I was like, okay, it'll end, it'll end, it's all for a good purpose, they're making a farm. Okay, but now I, that, that noise is not gonna end. <clears throat> There's no end to it, in my opinion. It's just gonna continue to be that way. We moved there because we were on a cul-de-sac, safe for my children. It, it will no longer be safe for my children, and that upsets me beyond belief, and I'm upset about it. And like I said, this is my worst nightmare, standing here in front of people, that I know and that I don't know, but all feel the same way, that we don't want our neighborhood intruded upon. People coming, you know, I had somebody come by and pick up something and we go, I didn't even know this neighborhood was back here, it's beautiful. Let me know if a home comes up for sale. They don't know what is back there. But now, strangers will. So I am afraid for my safety. That is all. Um, Ms. Miller, any questions? No questions, Our testimony. thank you. Board members? Very good, thank you for your testimony. <clears throat> I have a couple questions. Uh, My this name is, is the Al opportunity for, for you to give your own testimony. So we'll, we'll, we'll go ahead and ask your questions, we'll see if we can answer them Okay, I, Albert Luke, 607 East Court, I'm retired. Spell I know for the that record your last name, sir. Luke, L-U-K-E. I know that Mineral Hill got shut down because of lead. We were talking about shooting. Is there a lead recovery program at this range? Mr. Boyd. If they're shooting on their own personal property, it's not considered a range. And as far as I know, there's no lead recovery was, was program. Was Mineral Hill considered a range? They yeah, shut them down because of It was a... 
a okay. public private shooting range. But if you're shooting on your own property, okay, as long as you're meeting the right. requirements of DNR for safety. How about noise? Will they go by the same rules that they okay. use for deep run rifle from the re re revolver club that was shot down because of noise? They didn't have an. Look, that was a range again. That was a private club that um, was affected. It was a private was club. A, was that? Is this considered a private than a club? Private, uh, property owner. So they're all right. They can make as much noise as they want. They want to shoot on their property as long as they're doing it safely and in accordance with all um, state regulations covering firearms. Um, you know, all we property they can. Now all you have to open it to the public and have the public come shooting there. An occasional friend that comes over and shoots with them, that would be okay. But if they're shooting their own on their okay. own property with their own weapons, that's perfectly legal as long as they're doing it safely. All all the people on Don Avenue have to do is park one car across from the other and it'll shut the road down, make it a narrow lane. That, that would That's be looked at by um, during the site right. plan process. Thank you. Any questions, Ms. Miller? No questions, thank you. Board members? Okay. I wasn't sure if anyone else was getting up. Uh, my name is Larry Alvarez, A-L-V-A-R-E-Z, 2019 Don Avenue. I'm a teacher. Um, I just want to make a com comment of something that uh, came up uh, before the board decides you know, would you want something like this in the back of your neighborhood? You know, I, I know that Good Feelings Farm, which abuts <coughs> the Kate Wagner, was given a limit of 10 or 12 events, but they dump right, their driveway goes right out onto Kate Wagner, which um, in my discussions with the county's civil engineer, Kate Wagner and Deer Park are considered major arterial road functions. Don Avenue and Wilmot Ridge a residential there's going to be an impact so I would ask that if you were to give conditional which I'm against that instead of 12 you limit it to six instead of 200 people limited to a hundred people so at least minimize most of our neighborhood safety concerns which are traffic noise alcohol being served and the safety of the residents that live in that neighborhood there has to be some consideration for the fact that basically 12 times a year, this would be a restaurant in the back of a neighborhood serving alcohol with people. A lot, of a lot of the talk has been about things at night and what time they end. You know, I've been around Carroll County a long time myself. We're not just a neighborhood, it's a community. Ms. DeSalvo talked about, I, I played football at Gamber. Has anybody ever been on Deer Park Road in the fall? from about 10 a.m. to about 9 p.m.? <laughs> it's this, this country inn would be a traffic generator that if timed right, would add to the traffic generation of Gamber football. So my request would be to, if you did not did 12, but did six, make sure that they don't have events when Gamber has football games. Because that just makes, that's gonna make it ridiculous as, you know, just piggybacking on what Mr. Salvo <laughs> said. Um, the bank barn that was discussed. I, I heard Ms. Miller, uh, the attorney, say earlier they were requesting 12 because it was a tent. If they go to a bank barn, is 12 still the limit? It's the conditions that we put on this, the approval at this meeting. Okay, so if you, if so if if we put if we put six, if we put a limitation of six, we put a limitation of 12 today. In order for that to be modified, they would he would have to come back before this board. Okay, okay, okay. And then, um, um, and, and again, guys, like I said, you've heard a lot of testimony, um, mostly negative. Please consider that. I, I know when you guys drove down there, I personally talked to every single neighbor, except for one, from my house at the bottom of the hill where all the speed is generated, and every single person, some of them aren't here today, agreed to put that white sign in the yard because we wanted you all to see it on your site visit. That's what the neighborhood, it, it may be zoned agriculture, but it's going through residential to do its business and, and we're gonna be impacted, you know? And, and that, that's what we're trying to negate. Thank you. Any questions, Ms. Miller? No questions, thank you. Board members? 
No. Thank you. Thanks. Keith Eisman, 650 Wilmot Ridge Road. Um, Spell for the record your last name. E-Y-S-A-M-A-N. And again, this is nothing personal about any of this. Matter of fact, it sounds like we have some things in common as part of this. But the, the issues that we have that everybody's talked about is the traffic that comes in there. I, I'm uniquely impacted by it because I'm directly across from it. Are we able to enter any exhibits for you to look at? Yes. Okay, I have a number of photos. The first one really shows the impacts of my house. I um, mean, this is not during an event. This is just normal use, driving out of there with headlights. So I have some copies here that... Okay, go, go ahead and give those to Mr. Dixon up here, and Mr. Dixon will go ahead and label those, and we will enter those into evidence. May I also have the opportunity yeah, to and, review and once, I mean, once they're marked, if there are not separate copies. Can you deliver a copy to Ms. Absolutely. Miller? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Is this, is this my copy or is, do I need to hand this no, back? No, no, that's your copy. Okay, Mr. Perfect. Dixon. I just wanted to make sure I wasn't he's, holding he's it from you He's labeling the copy all. for okay. the record. Mm -hmm. So that you. probably hasn't made it around yet, but that's what I see every time, and that's at dusk when they come up that hill. I can only imagine what it would be like with 100 cars coming up there. It's just, it lights my whole house up lights my bedroom up, lights my living room up, it lights everything up. There's also photos in there that shows how the road's used and that it's not really um, open all the time like you talk about. So that's the biggest concern to me, and if you would please look at that, I'd appreciate it. Um, maybe we could talk about limiting uh, use of that so that it's not at nighttime. That might be something to consider. Thank you. Ms. Miller, any questions? Yes, I am going to have a few about just so we can clarify these exhibits before we, before I presume that they will be entered. Um, do you have them in front of you? I don't, okay. but I'm okay. familiar with them. Okay. Um, I'm sorry. How do you say your last name? Eisman. Eisman. Mr. Eisman. Um, so I, this one was pretty clear. Um, the second one, and Mr. Dixon, are we referring to these as? I'm just making the package exhibit one. Exhibit Eisman one. Okay. Exhibit so. One. Um, exhibit, on exhibit one, page two, this one, can you just tell us what road that is on? That is right in front of my house, right directly across from the entrance that was taken when my wife and I were walking. I thought it was a good image to show the impacts and that there's not that much room there and those are kids, neighborhood kids walking around there. I like just want to said, clarify no for the board whether that's Wilmot or Don. That's, that's uh, Wilmot. Okay. Because I assume all these photos are either Wilmot that's or Don. Don. That's Don right. Avenue. Okay, so then the third down. photo is what we're looking at, and that's what you just identified as Don, correct? Yes, that's going down Okay, Don. and then the fourth photo that we're looking at. That's going down Don. That's also Don, correct? And then the fifth photo. That's just the deliveries that were left in the roadway in front of their residence. On Wilmot Ridge, correct? Correct. Okay, thank you. And then can you tell us a little bit about, gosh, I'm losing sure. my page numbers. One. The last one. Four, five, six. Yeah, the sixth page. Yeah. Well, that, it, the roadway is 20 feet wide. Um, I actually went out and measured it. And my concern for that is, is you need a 19 foot radius to get out of a, a driveway without impacting or going into the other traffic. Mm -hmm. Being the person that has had his yard run over multiple times by people trying to leave that facility and not being able to make the turn, mm -hmm. that's a concern to me. So you I've prepared tried to this, is that accurate? Since you prepared this. I just want to make sure that they. I prepared. I, that's a picture of the measurement. Okay. I took that out of a standard engineering book. Okay. The radius for turns. Okay. So, oh, so this part is. I'm um, part of the reason I'm asking these questions. I'm not trying to be smart. Is because <laughs> when this is recorded, sometimes nobody right. has the context of the picture. So, is this part is what you said was pulled from the book, from some engineering book. Yeah, it okay. was pulled from. And then the, that's just a photo of like the measuring. To, device. Yeah, that's just to show how wide it is because there was some concern about how wide the road actually is. So I went out and Understood. measured it. Okay, I those are were my only questions, Mr. Board Bailey. members. Thank you. We're going to take a ten minute break real quick. Thank you.
What'd you say? <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> okay, we're going to call the BZA meeting back to order. Are there any, is there anyone else to give testimony? Please go to the microphone. The young lady back there and yes, you, you've stood up several times and. Hi, my name's Helen Grant, last name G-R-A-N-T. I live at 635 Wilmot Ridge Road. And my question was whether this board was actually gonna be considering the two previous times that this property has been attempted to be developed. I personally moved into the neighborhood in the 90, end of the 90s, the early 90s, and at that time the neighbors were part of a hearing that took place. I've actually spoken to Joe Vance, I have the case number, not on me. Um, twice that, develop, that area was to be developed and it was denied due to zoning because Don Avenue could not handle the volume of traffic. I know the second time excuse me, the first time it was denied because they tried to reroute the traffic off of Don. I am, I'm going to object. Side, and I believe that Remember. property was, um, they, they stopped them from going that way because a home was built on it. And I don't know if that property was heading towards Nelson or if that property was actually heading out towards uh, <coughs> the little street that's across from uh, Bullock's which would be at the other end of South Bend Court. Ms. Graham, what we're here to do today is, the re is a request for a conditional use for a country in an event facility. So any previous zoning decisions, it's based on what the zoning is today and the zoning on this piece of property is ag. And it sounds to me like that was a, there was an attempt to get that rezone to um, uh, increase the residential density. It was, uh, but at the time, and at the end, of, like it was 93, we were told that the property would be zoned agricultural and there could be one home as private property to, to enter. Yes. Onto and, Don, and no other traffic would be allowed from yeah, that. Yes, and then there's a whole list of conditional and uh, permissible, per, principal permitted uses that are in our code, and that's what we're here to enforce uh, is the well, principal permitted, they don't have to come before the Board of Zoning Appeals, but a conditional use, like it was requested today, has to come before the Board of Zoning Appeals. Okay. So, so we, we are not considering previous rezoning um, uh, attempts. So you're saying that could be brought up at a future meeting, is what you're saying? Well, I, it, it has no relevance to what we're here to decide today. Oh, it still has relevance with the amount of traffic that will be traveling up a small residential road. Yeah, I, I mean, we're, we're, we consider traffic absolutely in our decision here today. So will there be a traffic study or has there been a traffic study on? That, if there's a traffic, Mr. Voigt, go ahead and answer that before I get messed up. Mr. Bale, may I just briefly object for the purpose of uh, preserving my record here that anything that is part of a former decision, if I don't have that decision in front of me and can't see it and uh, it, what's being summarized, I have no ability to comment or, um, or review. So I don't have that in front of me. So again, I understand she's already testified to that, but I'm just pointing that objection out to preserve my record. And in terms of the traffic, and Mr. Voigt, obviously, please chime in if you think I'm misrepresenting this, but as part of whatever type of site plan is required by the development review, that will then be a decision that is made based on the site plan review as to whether a traffic impact analysis or study is required as part of that review. Yeah, I mean, you know, there, there's not to say that an individual could not always do a traffic study, but what I'm saying is that that could or could not be required as part of the site plan review, and there are mm. criteria that the county looks at to make that determination through that review process. D d d does that clarify things? I'm saying, but I, I'm surprised that the county wouldn't want to spend the time to do that before we wasted everybody's time to see if we could let this go forward. But, but our, the request here before the Board of Zoning Appeals is for a conditional use for a country inn and event facility. 
It has nothing to do with the, the site plan, the traffic study, all of that is before, that goes before the technical review committee and then the planning commission. Well, and I, uh, Mr. Bale, I'm sorry, I do understand her confusion because it is kind of confusing to the average citizen, but the zoning process through this board does precede any sort of site plan. So there has to be an approval the, because th there would be no purpose of proceeding through a site plan process on a use if it did not receive approval of this board. The, so the, that is why this is like the first step in the process, if you will. I do, I, I, I know I shouldn't be responding because it's not really time for questions, but I do think that that's a common misconception. So I thought it was worth pointing that out. So speaking about the road, I have one other question. I know objects, deliveries and things have been left on Wilmot Ridge and vehicles do have to go around the bend to pass that stuff. Um, going forward, would Mr. Wedekin be delivering all of that equipment whatnot right on Wilmot Ridge? Is his road wide enough for an event center? Are there, are there county requirements for the dimensions of his road leading from Wilmot to his property? Again, that concerns us because if all these events are coming and they're unloading 15, 20, 30 porta potties on our street, that's going to kind of affect us. Mr. Voigt. Uh, yes, all those type of items are looked at during the site plan process with the driveway access um, to the property and everything. That is all reviewed during the site plan process, which begins after they get the approval to have the event there. Okay. If they can't meet the requirements uh, at that time, uh, they would either have to comply with the requirements at that time, possibly ask for a variance, or it could be denied because it, it, there's no way it could meet the requirements. That's all looked at during the site plan process, which again is consists of several meetings, um, the county <clears> staff <throat> and the planning and zoning commission. They are all public hearings. You can all come and comment at those hearings um, and bring up technical details at the TRC or to the planning commission that can all be brought up to the county staff at that time. And they will look at all that during that process our entire neighborhood be notified I mean when this if you have signed up and if your name and address is on the sign up list or if you're an adjoining property owner of this property you will be notified by mail of future planning and zoning commission meetings and TRC meetings that are become part of that site plan process it, that will all be notified you all be notified by that okay because I know the original posting on the property <coughs> is mainly viewed by folks who live on the loop <coughs> well, per, the, per county code the top of the street right per county code all that's required to be notified for this hearing are the adjoining property owners people who touch this property and there's required to be a sign placed out in front of the property advertising this hearing they are the only legal requirements for notification prior to this hearing i only have another question i understand that the board is possibly in the process of renaming this type of an event you've considered it um, a country in slash event center and i understand you're in the process of turning that over to event slash um, in a, a bigger venue is that, there a change in that not, and how will that affect what we're doing here today the county is in the process of updating its current code to um, modernize it it hasn't been <coughs> looked at in over 30 years um, there has been suggestions made to separate the event center from the requirement of having a country in and just having it as an event center um, or an event venue, not a center. <coughs> um, the yeah. number of people or anything of that nature has not been set at any of that. It's just all been brought up to the Board of Commissioners and to the Planning Commission who have reviewed all the re upcoming code changes. And they're public and they're online and you can look at all those changes and they're getting ready probably in the next month or two to go before the board of county commissioners to be voted upon if they approve them then they'll become the legal code at that time but up until that time when the county commissioners vote on it the current standards you have to abide by okay because i understand as it, it is now it's like i said country in slash event center i was told it was going to be event center slash banquet facility well banquet facility, banquet facility um, that's part of the wording yes 
Um, one thing you have to remember about the, the event slash banquet facilities is that it's not open to the general public. So I can't have a concert mm -hmm. there and have everybody come. It's still going to be something that has to be by invitation only. And um, so it, a wedding or um, a club meeting or family reunion or something like that that's limited to only those people who are invited to the event or can attend. Uh, the general public cannot attend these events and just show up and attend. That's the same as it is in this code right now, and that's the same as it will be in the new code if it's adopted. I was just led to believe that it might mean the venue could be larger. Um, when I when I called and asked what what an event what what a country in an event center was, I was told um, the country in part indicated that Mr. Wedekind would have to have a facility where someone could spend the night. That's correct, um, and he is required now to have that. And then attend the, the uh, facility there for the event. I was told that an event could be anything I imagined. Well, I, like I say, what, what it's, do you mean? Are we talking like corporate retreats? What, what you could have imagine? you could have a retreat center on the property. That's something that's different than what the event um, facility is. Um, you can have a retreat and conference center on there currently, if you get approval through this hearing. Um, not this hearing, but through this process. Um, there are many different things that could happen on the property that are conditional uses that if they go through this same process could happen. That could be anything um, from a retreat conference center, a, a bed and breakfast, it could be a church, uh, it could be landscaping services, a blacksmith shop. They're all type of activities that could be approved if they go through this process of going before the board and getting approval to have it on that site. All those events, same as Mr. Whittigan will have to do, will have to go through the site plan process after they get the approval. And at that time, it's reviewed to make sure it meets all the county codes. Uh, that's including stormwater management, it's including roads, um, building codes, uh, it's, it covers, I think there's 27 different agencies that possibly could review the plan. Thank you. Any questions of her testimony? I just have one quick follow-up of Mr. Voigt, mm. just to clarify something. Okay. Mr. Voigt, um, I think it may have been a misstatement, but in listing the uses that would have to come before this board, is it true that a religious establishment is a principal permitted use in the agricultural district? In the agricultural district, yes. Thank you. Board members, any questions? Okay. Ms. Barnes. Since he answered a lot of her questions, may I ask questions? Um, if, if yes, well, well, hopefully, yes. Okay. Well, since none of us here are lawyers or zoning experts, maybe we're going about this backwards because it's starting to sound like he's going to get approval, and that we're just here to voice our concerns. Ma'am, I'm not. I'm not suggesting that he's going to get his approval. I have no idea. That's what? entirely up to the five people sitting up there. Uh, I'm just telling you what the the code says and what is allowed to be brought before the board as zoning appeals for approval. Understood. So that's totally up so to them. maybe someone there can tell us what would win him approval and what weight does our disapproval carry? We're here to uphold the code. Just the code. Yes, so ma'am. We don't, we do not, and I want, I want that to be perfectly clear. The code is being rewritten as, yes, as uh, they're in that process. This board does not rewrite the code. No. So, it's up to the, it goes to a citizen group of interested parties, then it's approved by the planning commission and ultimately uh, with changes by the board of county commissioners. So we, we uphold the code. Uh, we, we don't change the code based on a request. Uh, we uphold the code as it's written. Okay, so explain to us then, he meets the requirements of your code or is that something you well, have we, we will discuss that. So we could save ourselves a lot of time then if we knew the answer to that. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Hi, Kim Allenball, 651 Wilmot Ridge Road. We, we can't hear you, ma'am. I'm sorry. <clears throat> no worries. Um, I didn't realize you were allowed to take exhibits. So my name is Kim Allenball. I live at 651 Wilmot Ridge Road. I'm a CPA, last name A-L-L-E-N-B-A-U-G-H, and I just um, have a picture I took of um, Wilmot Ridge facing the Wedekind 
farm drive with the delivery truck. Um, you parked to be convenient for leaving things off and, um, and then my subsequent need to drive on the wrong side of the road to get by, as would any school bus. Is this something that I can have? Uh, show those to Ms. Miller and then approach Mr. Dixon and you can, we can enter those into evidence. Mr. Dixon, that will be labeled as Allen Ball Exhibit One. Okay, and we will we will enter those into evidence. Thank you, Keith Eisman. So I just have to ask the question: If you guys are going to rule on what? the requirements are. What's the point of all this? Do you take into consideration anything that we're saying in the determination? It seems like you got a lot of people that have probably taken off work today to come here and speak about things, but it doesn't sound like to me that anybody's paying any attention to what we're saying. You're going to base it on, on your rules that you have there, which is fine, but then what's the point of us even coming? I don't even know where to start. I, and I will object because I, I don't and, and, even and know to the extent that that's testimony. I, I'm, I'm, I'm just trying I'm, to understand I'm, the process. And I'm going to be brutally honest with you. I'm a little bit offended that you think that we're not listening to your comments. Well, I don't know. Just listening to what everybody just said there. We're, we're sitting here in they, judgment. We're, we're, okay. we're quasi-judicial. We're sitting here in judgment. And we have this code to go by. And that's, what we're, that's the reason we're sitting here in judgment is because of the code. We don't make the code, we don't write the code, we enforce the code, and that's why we're here. And this is the process that we use in order to determine whether the request for a conditional use for a country in an event facility at this place, in, in, the, in this location, is acceptable or not. Understood, and I was not trying to offend, I'm trying to understand the process that we go through. If we're gonna rule on what the code says, then I, I'm not sure you needed us. <laughs> <laughs> well, and no, Mr. We, Mr. Bale, to the extent it's relevant here, I think a lot of this is almost like a request for legal advice almost, but with that I will say, um, you know, we also have supporting case law that guides this board as well in its decision making in the code. It, um, it, and so all of that is what this board is tasked with considering in its decision here today. And, and there is a process, if, if, if the decision is not liked by one party or the other, uh, it can be appealed uh, to the circuit court. And, and my goal as chairman is to make sure that anything that's appealed is uh, upheld. Okay. We appreciate all your time. I'm back. Um, my name is Dennis Curl. I live at 19100 Don Avenue, Westminster, Maryland, 21157. I work for Toyota Motor Sales, inventory control, K-E-I-R-L-E. -E. Okay. My question is um, the code, the codes. Um, one of my concerns is, I know it's been brought up earlier in this meeting, is uh, about the um, alcohol, you know, the consuming of alcohol, and then uh, people driving after the event. Okay, and of course they're going to go right past my property, you know, when they're heading out down that hill. And um, my concern is I know we are going to get our lawns rowed over. We're going to get our mailboxes knocked down. That's, that's a fact. That's going to happen to some of us, okay, on these events. And I want to know, in, is there anything in the code that, ho that holds – uh, the county responsible uh, of approving this event center and country inn that when the damages occur to our property because this has been permitted you know besides a person can doing it which you know most likely we're going to be in bed at time of night right we're not going to know but who, where, where else does the responsibility fall when this has happened and it's going to happen it's going to happen repeatedly and then it's going to cause problems, you know, because I'm not. I'm going to be very unhappy. It keeps happening on my lawn, on my mailbox. I'm not going to be happy about that at all. So somebody should be responsible for that. 
And I'd like to know, is there anything in the codes that covers anything like that? All I can say is a, a, a large landowner who has people <clears throat> trespass, um, I contact the sheriff's department. So that's what I do personally, so. Right, right. Okay, other thing is, um, is there any kind of plan for a, another lane or road uh, leaving, um, leaving uh, the Whitcomb Farm, another route out? Is there any kind of plan or anything? There was nothing testified to here today that that, that would occur. Okay, it, it was asked earlier on? No, nothing was testified to and we're- Okay. Our judgment is based on the evidence that was presented, which includes what Ms. Miller uh, presented and what you all uh, presented as a neighbor. So it, it was not, that, was, that was not in the plans that we saw here today. That was not entered into evidence. Okay, all right, thank you. Any questions? Okay. Questions? See, you guys are learning the process. <laughs> Okay, presentation of testimony and evidence is now closed and summations are in order. Ms. Miller. Thank you, Mr. Bale. Um, we've heard a lot of, of testimony and evidence here today. Uh, I genuinely do appreciate the neighbors' participation and specifically their honesty in terms of taking the oath. That's the first that we've had, <coughs> we've had anyone point out that they needed to take the oath, so I really do appreciate that. Um, as Mr. Voigt clarified, and as we've all kind of talked about through the process, it is a little bit confusing to the average citizen that this is a process that precedes a site plan process. So there are a lot of elements that this board takes into consideration that also are taken into consideration through the site plan process in perhaps more of a technical review sense. Um, to the extent there was conversation about other BZA cases or other rezoning cases or anything else, um, you know, like that, I think a few neighbors brought up uh, perhaps <coughs> another country in facility and some other history to this site. You know, this board, as Mr. Bale just explained, is is tasked with reviewing a specific property. So to the extent that those approvals were or were not granted, that has no bearing on your decision here. Your decision here is in looking at the characteristics of this property, specific to this area, specific to this use. And as you all have heard from other cases, there can be a vast difference in the way one person chooses to operate a country and a wedding facility and someone else. So <coughs> what you are tasked with looking at is the specifics that have been testified to here today. <coughs> this is all, as you can see from um, exi applicants exhibit one, this is a predominantly agriculturally zoned area. Um, as you all are very well familiar with, Carroll County uh, is vastly agriculturally zoned and has a very uh, liberal ag zone, if you will. One of the principal permitted uses in the ag zone is a religious establishment. Presumably, if someone wanted to operate a church on this same property or any of these properties and went through a site plan process, an event could be held without going through this BZA process every night of the week. Um, but that's not what we're here for today. What we are here for today is a conditional use in the agricultural district. The, uh, I think, I don't want to <clears throat> mischaracterize, but the, the brunt of the testimony that we've heard from the neighbors and uh, other citizens in the area is related to issues that are not before this board. Um, in terms of other legal use of the property, historical use of the property, um, and, and, and you know, deliveries, all of those sorts of things are not about the country in an event facility. Um, the, the country in an event facility concerns that were raised were related to traffic and the service of alcoholic beverages. Um, traffic, this is we are requesting this board place a condition on this use of 12 events per year. <clears throat> um, this is a publicly maintained road. Any use that comes before you is going to cause traffic on a public road. 
This is a perfect example of a huge property that is able to self-park its all of its use on the property. So this is not going to generate parking on the public roads. Now, to the extent that there is other neighborhood parking on the public roads that then people coming to this venue would have to avoid, I can't, I can't guarantee that. Nobody can speak to that. But that will not be caused by the use of this property as subject to this request here before you. That will just be a result of how a neighborhood decides to allow people to park their cars if they're going to park on the public road. The, the traffic, additionally, uh, will not be generated during what we kind of technically know as the peak hours, okay? Because these are not commuter type events that we're talking about. Um, the, the alcohol service, and I'll circle back on that, but the alcohol service, the, Mr. Wedekin testified that it, the way he will operate this facility is that any alcohol that is served will be served and will have to be served through a licensed caterer. Carroll County and the state of Maryland have a process through which an establishment has to get a license. And part of that process requires some limits on how that alcohol is served to people. So th that is the mm. greatest assurance far and above any private party that you're hosting on a property where alcohol is being served in a responsible way to people who are of age and not over served. So that is a separate process where somebody has to go through a licensing process and have servers licensed to serve those alcoholic beverages. Now, th is there any way to prevent one thing from happening? No, but I would submit to you that the same could be said for me having a party at my house. Um, every day somebody could break the law. That cannot be the reason under the legal standard that my client is denied this opportunity before this board. The, I, there was also one thing mentioned that I just want to to clarify in case there was a miscommunication. This request is not necessary for the construction of that potential future barn. Okay, that Mr. Wedekind, if Mr. Wedekind wanted to put another mm. barn on his property, he could go through the permitting process and do that on his agriculturally zoned property. What we were saying to you through the testimony is that if and when that is ever constructed to go with this use, he will go through the appropriate permitting process and we wanted to show you where it would be put on the property so that you can consider that in your decision here today. This is, as Mr. Dixon introduced when he read through the file, this, this is consistent with the master plan. This does meet the Schultz v. Pritz legal standard. There, there is case law that talks about and that guides this board's decision in approving or denying conditional uses or what some jurisdictions call special exceptions. And the, the relevant case to that decision is a case, case Schultz v. Pritz, which this board I know is, is very familiar with. And what that case says in a nutshell is that the board is tasked with approving a use if it meets the code requirements, and as long as it does not create adverse impacts above and beyond those inherently associated with such a use regardless of its location in the zone. So there has been no testimony here today that this use will generate an adverse impact above and beyond any other country in an event facility. In fact, I would submit to you that it's actually less than others because we are requesting that this board place a condition of 12 events per year. That is not something that's outlined in the code. That is related to site plan constraints and our own independent judgment and decision to request that <clears throat> condition. Um, I would also suggest in, in relation to hearing some of the concerns and, and, and also to the testimony that was spoken to here today, that this board place a condition that any alcohol be served through a licensed caterer, um, that there be a 10 p.m. end time for any music, and that there be a maximum amount of attendees of 200 people. Those are all conditions that we would be willing to offer and are asking this board to consider in making its decision. Uh, I believe that those all, even without those conditions, I believe that what you've heard testified to meets the Schultz v. Pritz standard, but I think it certainly does with, with the offering of those conditions. And I, I think that that's a way to 
ease some of the concerns um, in a reasonable way for Mr. Wedekind. So with that, I would request um, your approval of this conditional use. I appreciate the time that you've taken for this hearing um, and, and guiding everyone through it and would, would request that this board grant the conditional use approval that's before you today. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Bale. <clears throat> Ms. Uh, Allen Ball, did you bring that photo up to here? I did. Oh, so, somebody's okay. All right, I just went. Sorry. I, I just wasn't sure what happened with it. <laughs> he needed a second look. Okay, hearing and record of this case is now closed in accordance with the Open Meeting Acts of Maryland. We will now consider the case. Board members, who wants to go first? Lisa. I always go first. I'd like to. No, you don't. <clears throat> I always go first. Mark is very cogent. I, I mean, I can, I can tell you my thoughts today, but I have not formed a... a Conclusion. A conclusion at this point yet. I'm Tell sorry. me your thoughts. Um, I think I heard a lot of concerns here from the neighbors regarding uses that have been, on, you know, happening on this property that <clears throat> are permitted on an ag property and are not relevant to whether we approve or disapprove the application before us. Um, and, you know, I'm sympathetic to all the the testimony that I heard regarding traffic but I do recognize that if we do decide to approve this that there's going to be a traffic study done and if they can't meet the requirements then this is not going to happen on this site um, I think the 131 acres is is perfect by all appearances it's but recognizing that you have to go through you know down Don Avenue to get to it by all appearances it's it's buffered from the surrounding neighbors well buffered um, the alcohol, I think, I think Miss Miss Miller outlined sufficient conditions that if we do approve it, that you know it would limit the number of events, the number of people. Um, the alcohol issue concerns would be addressed. The the noise, you know, after ten o'clock would be addressed. So I think that you know should perhaps assuage some of the neighbors' concerns. So I'm. I guess the only thing I'm torn about is, you know, I'm not, I'm not sure that I can even verbalize that yet. I, it, when this many neighbors show up, it gives me pause before I can just automatically say, yes, I'm, I'm willing to grant this. I mean, my gut says, yes, it's, it's an appropriate use. It's assumed to be an appropriate use as a conditional use on this site. <clears throat> Sorry, maybe that was all over the world, but that's not what I'm thinking so far. Mark. <laughs> He's looking at me because I'm not going to be here yeah. next month. He's going to throw that yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, Mr. Snyder. Thank you. Um, thank every, I, we thank everyone for showing up. And contrary to some of the comments, your, your, your testimony is always very important because we, you provide insight to us. Um, I'm intimately familiar with this site because I grew up in Smallwood. I remember when Don Avenue was built initially. So I have this inherent understanding of the area. I used to hunt squirrels down where the original cul-de-sac was. Um, so I, I, I am familiar with the property. Um, stepping back from that, we see a lot of these venues being requested. And what's really interesting, this <clears throat> site is large. We're not dealing with setback issues by any stretch of the imagination. It's remote in that regard. And, you know, for face value, one would say, this makes sense. On the flip side of the equation, we see a lot of these, we've approved a lot of these, but I don't ever recall approving one that drove through a residential neighborhood for access. There were always on, while it is a public street or public road, there's public roads and then there's public roads. At least that's my perception. And that's what really gives me pause. Um, if there was a different access that did not negatively impact the nature of that neighborhood, if access wasn't through, directly through a residential neighborhood, I, I would be more inclined to support it, but for face value, that particular aspect of it, I can't get past. 
And so I would not support the request. Mr. Caldwell. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, again, I appreciate everybody coming out and giving your points of view. Traffic was obviously your number one concern, but we're not traffic experts up here. The process includes a review of the traffic that this, this facility will generate. If it does have a severe impact on the neighborhood, they will not allow it to go forward. So we we're only the first step in a long process that the applicant has to go through. So, you know, I'm not a traffic expert. I can't uh, say one way or another what the impact is going to be. But what we have before is a, a set of codes. We have, you know, the uh, Fritz versus Schultz case which guides a lot of the, the work that we do. And from my point of view, that the, the applicant has made their case for the exception, the, uh, the conditional use. Mr. Simmons. Um, when I first looked at this, I thought this is a very reasonable request. Uh, and I'm inclined to approve it. Um, the testimony that is presented uh, confirmed that to me. I'm not surprised at the outpouring of concern from the neighbors, uh, not by the number or the, uh, the volume of your concerns, particularly about young children. I understand that. Uh, I too live in a neighborhood with young children, and uh, I I think with certain conditions, uh, this board should approve the request for a country in an event facility because I don't think it's going to result in any adverse effects greater than any place else which is the basic criterion for for our decision. So I'm going to vote in favor of it. Okay. I guess that only leaves me. First of all, I want to thank you all. We had a large crowd here today, and it didn't turn into a rerun of Jerry Springer, and I really appreciate that. Um, as a matter of fact, one person said, do we need security down there? And I said, we'll be fine. So and I do appreciate that. I, I really, you have no idea how much I appreciate it. I've been to public hearings where they haven't been anywhere close to as polite as what you all have been. This case, when you look at it, and um, when you, we drove down Don Avenue and we saw all the white signs out there, it was like, woo, we have some opposition here. So what do we have opposition to? We have opposition to the traffic. And my question was, I, I was driving the van, how many acres is this? It's 131, according to what was in the file. I'm like, 131, okay, that's, I, I, I do know what acre, I know what 100 acre farms look like. Um, the one thing that I was surprised at, and I questioned, I said, are there any distance variances requested in this conditional use? because the request is for a conditional use of a country in an event facility. And there were no variances. The, the closest residence was nearly a thousand feet away. We, we've had event centers that are a whole lot closer to residences and properties than a thousand feet. The alcohol issue, I don't mean to be pushing that issue off to someone else, but that really is someone else's issue. And the caterer, if they don't adhere to the rules of our local liquor board, uh, they can have their liquor license suspended. We have had establishments in Carroll County that have had several months where they could not serve alcohol. Um, it's enforced, I know the people on the liquor board and they take their job seriously. So that, that's not our issue and I'm not passing the buck. 30, I hate to admit this, but 30 years ago, my son was in the Deer Park soccer program. 
and I know what the traffic is like there. The traffic that you all endure on Deer Park Road um, is greater than what I think the traffic will be generated by this event center. If there's a traffic issue, um, because our determination here today is <clears throat> to determine whether this country in or event facility at this location would result in adverse effects, noise, dust, or traffic, greater here than anywhere else <clears throat> in the agricultural district. And I would say that they met that standard. And if traffic is an issue, it will be addressed further in the process when it goes before the Technical Review Committee and the Planning Commission. We heard about Mr. Wedigan's daughter's wedding and someone else's wedding that maybe went a little bit longer in the night. Um, if these are truly family weddings, if he turns, if, if nobody complains, it, it could go till two or three o'clock in the morning. At least the request here, we can put conditions on the hours of operation. The shooting on his property, um, I don't want to say this, um, maybe it was inconsiderate, but it's allowed, especially when you have 131 acres. If you have a backdrop, um, there, there's, there's nothing in the code that would prohibit you from doing that on your agricultural property if you didn't endanger other people. The noise is not an issue. And we also heard uh, a lady testify that the constant pounding of fence posts. And in this county, we do have a right to farm ordinance and that's part of normal farming operations. So when those posts were being pounded, I know I can hear posts being pounded a mile from my, from my place. And I know that at some point in time, it will stop. So based on, <clears throat> based on the testimony that I heard today, along with the actual request, uh, I, I don't see how we can legally turn this request down <clears throat> and if we did i feel very certain that the carroll county circuit court would overturn our decision so we're bound by we are bound by this code we don't make the code as i as i said earlier so with that i'll go ahead and entertain a motion i have a motion prepared if you wish okay mr caldwell in case number 6409 before the Board of Zoning Appeals that the board grant the conditional use for a country inn and event facility requested with the following provisos that music ends at 10 p.m. The maximum number of events of any kind is limited to 12 per year. That alcohol is only provided by a licensed caterer and the limit of 200 persons per event. Do I have a second on the motion? A second. If I may, um, mm. I think they said that they would stop the music at 10, too. Did, did you mention that? Yes, yeah, I did. Yeah, that was yeah, it's being right. over at 10. All right. Not just stop the music, is what you, I understand. It's at 10 p.m. Event over at 10 or music at 10? Music end at 10 and clean up time is what was testified to. Okay, so you like me to amend that? You, you, music ends at ten. We the event end, the events end at ten. The events end at ten. But with sufficient cleanup time. Yeah, I mean that's music and event. All right, so be it. Will, will you, <clears throat> Mr. Simmons, will you agree to that yes. amendment? Okay. Yes. You want to repeat it? Nope, we're good, I think. <clears throat> okay. Discussion on the motion. Did the motion include specific mention of a licensed bartender? Yeah, licensed. A licensed yes. uh, caterer, yes. Yeah. I, I would say, I think relative to the case law involved, that this is a unique situation in that there's other places in the agricultural zone. This is much more impacting at this location because it's driving through a neighborhood, an established neighborhood, in order to access the venue as opposed to other areas within the agriculture. So I, my feeling is that would be addressed because it is more of an impact here. 
in my viewpoint, but that would just be my general discussion before voting. Do you think that we should have something specific regarding the traffic? No, it, it isn't. The, what, where my <clears throat> point is, is that when you look at the case law, it's relative, as I can't remember the exact wording, but it, it's, it's no more impacting here than it would be any place else. And what I'm saying is the point that you're accessing the venue through a neighborhood, a residential neighborhood, is more impactful <coughs> than it would if you had it out as we have in all the, the best of my recollection, all the others were out on the main road and you didn't have to access it through a neighborhood. So I'm saying there is where I believe the case law doesn't really apply, or the, perhaps the case law does apply in that regard. So that would be my discussion before decision. Any other discussion? <coughs> to, to address uh, Mr. Snyder's concern, I think the traffic evaluation will take that into consideration. I'm not saying the traffic evaluation does not, con does not, will not address the traffic flow. What I'm saying is by accessing this venue through a residential neighborhood, you've changed the, you're changing the character of the flow of people and traffic through that area and impacting that neighborhood. You're changing the complexion of that neighborhood by allowing a commercial, essentially a commercial facility to exist. That's just my viewpoint. And I, so it isn't, you know, uh, the road needs to be 30 foot wide or 40 foot wide or whatever. Whether it's 15 foot wide or 40 foot wide, you're still impacting the neighborhood. And that is my point. Well taken, sir. Thank you. <coughs> any, any further discussion on the motion? Everyone understands the motion fully? Yes. <laughs> okay. All those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, no. No. Motion carries. Our oral decision will become final upon a written decision which will be issued within 30 days unless otherwise extended by this board. The board's decision may be appealed by filing a petition for judicial review with the clerk of the circuit court for Carroll County in accordance with the provisions of Chapter 200, Title 7 of the Maryland Rules of Procedure. The appeal must be filed within 30 days of the date of this board's written decision. Thank you very much. <laughs>